I have a few Thanksgiving jokes. Uh, if I can find them, I have them up here somewhere. Uh oh, I hope I didn't close my window. Oh, good. There it is. Um, and then I have a spiritual thought. And then after that, um, Carolyn, could you say the prayer for us? Sure. I'd be happy to. Awesome. Okay. What do you call a running turkey? Fast food. Uh, why did the farmer run a steam a steamroller over his potato field on Thanksgiving Day? He wanted to raise mashed potatoes. Um, let's see here. What animal has the worst eating habits? The turkey, because it gobbles everything up. Uh, what is a turkey's favorite dessert? Peach gobbler. And our last one, why do turkeys eat so little? Because they're always stuffed. <laughs> Those are good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for our spiritual thought today, um, from 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 20. And when the Jews heard these things, they were angry with him, talking about Lehi. Yea, even as with the prophets of old, whom they had cast out and stoned and slain. And they also sought his life that they might take it away. But behold, I, Nephi, will show unto you that the tender mercies of the Lord are over all those whom he hath chosen because of their faith, to make them mighty, even unto the power of deliverance. And then going along with this, it might sound like this is meant for husbands and wives. Uh, it's definitely applicable for married folk, but it is also applicable to everyone else. Adam S. Miller said this. Faith is more like being faithful to your husband or wife than it is like believing in magic. Fidelity is key. You may fall in love with someone because of how well they compliment your story, but you'll prove yourself faithful to them only when you care more for the flawed, difficult, and unplotted life you end up sharing with them. Faith isn't the opposite of knowledge. Rather, like love, faith perfects knowledge by practicing fidelity to it. All right, Carolyn, go ahead. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful to thee for all that thou has given us. We're so grateful for this class and for all the things that we are able to learn. And we pray that thou will bless us with um, open minds that we may be able to learn and to understand the new material that we have this week. And we um, are grateful for Brother Birch. And we ask thee to bless him and his family. And we pray these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, it looks like we're going to learn about a raise this week. That's awesome. I'm really pumped. I love arrays. All right. I bring that over there. Move this over here. And present. All right. Uh, I guess before we go into this, were there any questions from last week? Anything that you guys wanted to talk about? Sweet. Well, let's check out arrays. Uh, what is an array? An array is very simply a collection of variables. We've talked about variables. Um, let me open up VS Code here. And we'll just do a, a quick review of variables. All right, so uh, loan.html, this was one of your guys' assignments, I think. Um, anyways, every time we say var, or I could say let, that did not work. Um, or we could also say const, okay? Um, these three are ways that we can declare variables. All right, uh, the difference between let and var is pretty minimal. I've, I got questions about that earlier in the semester and I said, I didn't really care what you use, okay? There's nothing in this class that would require you to use one or the other. Const is a little bit different than let and var. Uh, you're declaring a constant variable, which means you cannot change it. Uh, we call that an immutable piece of data, an immutable variable. Both let and var, if I wanted to, in the next line, I could say, you know what? Principal actually equals 20. I could change it. If I tried to do that with years on the next line right here, I could not, all right? But all three of these have something very similar in common. They allocate a space in memory in our computer's hard drive. Well, that's false. In memory, okay? Uh, short-term memory, RAM. They allocate a space in our, in our short-term memory of our computer to store data, all right? And I could declare a variable by just saying let uh, name, and that, once this runs, or if I said var name, same thing, once it runs, 
it will find a space in memory and basically save a spot in memory for whatever data we're going to store in this variable. And then we access that data by using the variable name that we declare when we declare that variable. Okay, pretty basic. We've been, we've been doing this all semester. Um, that's just a quick review for you guys. Okay, now an array is a collection of variables. All right, just now we saw four different variables. Um, they were all declared separately, but they were all different variables. And if I was going to look inside of my computer's memory for those variables, they would be all over the place. They have no relation to one another. They're just different variables stored in different places. It'd be like randomly picking people or students like out there in the eye center and finding their addresses in Rexburg. Okay, completely independent of one another. They have nothing to do with each other. Now, an array being a collection of variables, um, these will all be stored together. Okay, generally when you're programming, you don't really have to worry too much about where they are stored. But it is important to know that variables in an array or pieces of data in an array are all stored sequentially. And so if I wanted to access someone's address, for example, um, I could be at somebody's house and I could probably safely assume that their next door neighbor's address is four or eight numbers greater or less than their own address. Okay, because the address system, they're, they're sequential. Okay, there's a pattern there. Well, with arrays, it's the same thing. Okay, data that we store in arrays, they're all going to be stored right next to each other. And so we can access the different items in an array by what we call an index. You could think of it as an address. All right. It is a very simplified address. Okay, it's an index. So the first value in my array will have an index of zero. The last value in my array, in this case, will have nine. The array length of this guy is 10. Okay, arrays are always zero based, which means the index of the first value in an array will always, 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 always be zero. And then it'll go up from there. So if I have an array with 10 values in it, the last index will be nine. If I, if I have an array with 100 values in it, the last index will be 99, because we always start these off at zero. Now let's look at how to declare an array. I should open up a new file so I don't ruin this. I, I don't know where this came from. Um, let's see here. New file, and I'll just call this arrays h2 okay so in here uh let me just write up some html real quick so we can run this in our browser and right here i'm going to say var and i'm going to call this names equals and then i open up some square brackets let me blow this up a little bit for you guys so it's really easy to see okay now there are a couple of ways that i could do this Let's say I want to list the names of the six people in this class right now. Okay, I could say var name one equals Samuel. Var name two equals Shara, and so forth. Okay, that would be one way. And then I could, I could get this data any way that I need. It wouldn't be the most efficient way, but I could do it. Okay, now what's cool about arrays is I could just say Samuel right here. And Shara. What else do we have? We have Carolyn and Rachel and Brian. Okay, so I have just declared an array of names. Okay, I could declare six. Oh, we got to add Jordi in there. There we go. Okay, I could declare seven different names. I forgot mine too. Okay, and have them all stored in different variables. But there are a number of benefits to this. Can you guys think of any reasons why I might want to use an array if I was going to have all of our names stored in a variable as opposed to different variables? What are you guys' thoughts? It could make it easier to print out all these names because you just say you could make a for loop with just this array in it and go through zero through the n. Seriously make it way easier. Okay, if I wanted to print all of these out, okay, let's go back to this like name one, we had Samuel, and we'll just do two. And then var name two was Shara. Okay, if I wanted to print both of those out to the page, okay, I could, um, the easiest way would probably be to like declare another variable. And I could say equals, I could say name one, and then message plus equals name two. And then we just say document 
dot get element by ID. We'll say output. We don't have that yet, but equals message. Okay. And that would output both of these names. There won't be a space or anything, but it'll output them. Okay. But if we have an array that we can work with, we can do something really cool. So like Samuel said, we could just make a simple loop. So I'll say four and I'll say I equals zero. Well, I is less than, and something really cool about arrays, if you look back at this slide, we have a length. Okay, this is actually a piece of data that is available for every single array in the existence of JavaScript um, and every other programming language that I've dealt with. But I can say names.length. Okay, now if you look here, my, my text editor is gonna help me out a little bit here. It will recognize names as a certain data type. It will recognize names as an array. If I had a string, okay, and I said name one dot, you can see that I could make this text bold, or I could say character at, or concat with something else, or what does it end with? There's all these different things that I can do with a string. Look at this, two lowercase, that's fantastic. If I wanted to turn the whole string to, to lowercase, it'd be as simple as just saying that, okay? But we're not dealing with strings, we're dealing with arrays. So if I change this to names, you will see, why is it so small? Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, you will see that this has a bunch of other stuff. Okay, uh, we didn't have push, map, pop, keys, length, join for each. We didn't have any of this with the strings, but all of this is available to me to work with my array, any type of array, any array that I declare. If I just hit, if I just say arrays, array name dot, um, then it'll list all that stuff and I can look at it. Now, if you're not using VS Code, um, you could do something like this. JavaScript arrays. W3 schools will most likely be the first thing that comes up. And down here, look at all this stuff. Okay, it shows all these different ways that you can work with arrays. Okay, and I can click over here, JavaScript array methods, and I can see how all these different methods work. I can see what pop is, I can see what pushes, all these different things. And you can see there's like a billion of them. It'll teach you how to use every single one. All right, now let's come back over here and let's say I wanna, I wanna loop through my entire array. Okay, well, we have our length. Now remember, arrays are zero based, which means the first index will always be zero. So if I was gonna give every single one of these a number, Sam would be zero, Cher would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have seven names here but the length of the array is six. All right, so if I was gonna say I equals zero, while well, I is less than names.length. Sorry, I lied, the length is seven. The length is seven, the last index is six. Okay, that'll go from index zero to six because the length is gonna be seven. Okay, so it'll go from zero to six and we'll just say I plus plus. And then in here, we could say message plus equals names, we have to reference the array name, which is names. And then we have to say what index we want to list. And I would just say the index of I. And then maybe we do add a space this time. Okay. And then I'll just move this down here. And then I'll take that out. Okay. So names is our array name. And then I can access any specific name in that array with our bracket notation right here. So if I said like three, that would print up Mary Shell. Okay, or if I said four, that'd be Brienne. Okay, every single item in an array will have a specific address and it's just a number, an incrementing number based on where it is in the array. So for now, I'll just, I'll just say I, because as we loop through this, our first index is gonna be zero and then it'll be one and then two and then three, all the way up to six. And so that should get all of our names into this message string. Let's give it a shot. Um, this will throw an error. Does anyone know what error this is going to throw when I run it? If I delete this line of code, there's still an error. What do you guys think it is? Besides not calling it. What was that, Samuel? Besides not calling it. You... Hey, yeah, so we didn't call a function. The code's just in here. 
And we also have an output div. Okay, so let's try something. I'm gonna comment this out first and see if this is able to run without any errors. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this path, come into my browser and paste. Okay, I didn't see anything happen. Open this up. We do have an error. Message is not defined. Let's go define message. Here I'll save our message declared. Okay, now we have a space in memory to actually add these names to. And maybe I'll just declare it as an empty string. And then it'll be easy, easy to add a string to it every time. Okay, hit refresh. And I didn't see anything happen. But if I come over here and I put a breakpoint in here, watch what happens. I'm gonna hit refresh. Okay, now notice this is not in a function. Like Samuel noted, we don't have a function call here. I'm not pushing it with a button. Um, so anything outside of functions in JavaScript will just run on page load. So notice this thing right up here, my page is still loading because I paused it with my breakpoint. All right, so I can look at names and check this out. There's all sorts of cool stuff here. Well, mainly just three things, okay? The first one is that I have all my names. The second one is that I can see the address of every single name. And the third one is I can see the length of my array. The debugger is fantastic because it can, it'll really make things easy, especially, especially when working with arrays. Uh, name one and name two, we don't care too much about these variables. We're not gonna use them, but you can see they're just strings. All right, definitely looks different than this array data type that we're seeing right here. All right, now let's check this out. I equals zero, names.length, notice it's seven. I could look and see that here. Okay, it's just another attribute, another piece of data for this array. If I come back over here um, and I just type in names dot, you can see that length is right here. Now, this is a different icon because it, length is not a function. Length is a piece of data. Okay, the rest of these are all functions that we can use with um, arrays. Now, let's come back over here. So length is seven and my greatest index is six, which is perfect because this says I'm gonna loop from zero to less than seven, which is six. So it'll go through my entire array. I'll hit F10 and I can hover over names right here, but I can also highlight this whole thing. So from names to the end of the closing bracket and I can see exactly what is at that location in the array. Okay, I can also hover over I and see, okay, I is zero right now. Uh, what is that names at index of zero? It's Samuel. Hit F10, it added that to message. Come down here, I is now one. I can highlight this again and see, okay, what's names at index of one? And it's Shara, okay? So I'll just come through, okay? And you can see it's just adding these names onto here. All right, I'm gonna hit F8 right here. It'll jump down here and I can look at message in all of its glory and it has all of our names, okay? now. It's not gonna do anything on the page because we're not using our HTML at all. We're just running JavaScript in our browser. I could even do this in the console if I wanted to and it would work just fine because it's just plain JavaScript. Okay, now I'm gonna let that go and let's open this up. Okay, we are gonna have two errors right here. The first one, let me put a breakpoint right here. I'm gonna hit refresh. All right, my code is running. Page is loading even though I just have it paused. Now, if I come down here, if I hover over document, you can see it has a bunch of stuff in here. And I say, get element by ID output. I'm gonna highlight this and it says null. That's because my page isn't done loading. My page is still loading, it's not there yet. So as soon as I try to assign something to this inner HTML, it's gonna give me a big old error because it won't be able to find inner HTML of null. This is still null down here, okay? So watch the error pop up in the console. I hover over it and says, cannot set property in our HTML of null. So let's put that over there. So I'm gonna come down in here and I'll say um, div with an ID of output. Should be all we need. Hit F5, stop on our breakpoint. I'm gonna just come down here and I'm gonna highlight this again and let's see what we have. It's still null. Any thoughts as to why? not calling it or are we calling it so we're not calling a function yet so no we're not calling it so i guess the real question is why have i had you guys calling functions this entire semester because javascript loads faster than the html okay yes this isn't my code 
and it'll show up about like a thousand, a thousandth of a second after this all finishes running. But right now, I'm gonna to try to assign this message to inner HTML of null in order to give me an error. Okay, that exact same error, even though I have this in the code. Okay, now let's call it with a function. So I'm just gonna add a button here and I'll say on click and I'll say uh, print names. Okay, and then up here, I'll say function print names. And then this whole thing, control shift up arrow, I'm just gonna put in there. Okay. So now this code will not run on page load before the HTML shows up, it will run as soon as we press the button. Well, if we're able to press this button, it means that the HTML has successfully loaded, which means this will exist. Okay, let's try it again. F5, I'm gonna move that, I'm gonna press my button. Oh, it didn't do anything. Okay, I'm gonna put a breakpoint there. Okay. Weird. I think that might be throwing something off. I'm gonna come back over here. Move that. I don't even know where that came from. I'm gonna press my button again. There we are, okay? And there's our array, which is actually a string now. Okay. Okay, any questions about this code right here? Okay, let's check out some more examples. Okay, uh, declaring, creating, and populating arrays. So there's a number of ways to do it. Uh, I hardly ever do a couple of these. But let's talk about them. So uh, we can declare an array name of anything, OK? Um, I do do this quite a bit. If I have an array that I have to add to, and I don't know what I have to add it to it yet, then I'll make an array, just like this. And I'll declare it, and then I can add to it later, OK? Um, similarly, though, so with this array name right here, to make it an array data type, I have to say new array size. Because think of it this way. If I come into here and I say var new array, okay, how on earth is my program gonna know what data type this is? I'm gonna do our little trick here, new array dot, and look, look at this, document get out of ID. It just has all the text inside of my file right here. Not related at all to an array because this is not an array data type. It doesn't care what the name is, doesn't matter. Um, so like right here, my computer knew that message was a string because I said equals a string. So if I wanted to declare this as an empty array, I would just say equals empty square brackets. And then if I come down into here and I say dot, look at that, all my functions for arrays, okay? Because I declared it as an empty array. Um, so I do that way more than these first two lines of code, probably because it's more concise. And I rarely know this, the exact size of an array before I make it, okay? So that usually doesn't apply to me either. Um, create a scores array with 25 empty slots. I can save our scores equals new array with 25 in there. Okay. And so this third line basically combines the first two lines. Okay. I can declare it and assign it an empty array in the same line of code. Uh, that's also what I did right here. I declared new array and assigned it an empty array all in one line of code. All right. Um, and then look at this, I can assign a new value to any address or index inside of my array. I can say scores at index of zero equals 50. I could say scores at index of 20 equals six or anything, okay? I could assign those scores. So let's look at one example of that. Um, let's say I have, uh, I'm just gonna come down here and I'll say uh, var uh, cities. And I'll make it an empty array. And I'll say four, I equals zero uh, and I is less than a hundred. Well, let's say five, that'll be quicker. I plus plus, okay? Now I put five here because currently cities doesn't have a length. Well, it does, it's zero, okay? So if I did cities.length, it would, we'd never loop through it. Um, but then let's say in here, I want to add to cities. So I could say cities uh, at index of I, so it'll be zero, one, two, three, four for all of our spaces in our cities array equals and then we can put a piece of data here. I could say it equals five. Okay, then for all my cities, we'll put the number five in for each one of them. I could also say uh, prompt, please enter a city name. Okay, that'll give my little pop-up box where the user can type in something. And we're just gonna add it straight to cities.
Okay, so um, let's say uh, right here, I just want to print up cities instead of message. And let's see what happens when we run this. Hit F5, take my breakpoint out, hit my button. And I'll say Rexburg and San Diego, Spokane, Seattle, and New York. Okay, and you can see that all of these were added to our cities array. Okay. All right. So that's another way to populate an array. Also, if I knew exactly what data I needed in my array, I could just declare it like this. So with our cities, instead of doing all this, I could just say uh, equals Rexburg, San Diego, New York, and whatever, and whatever else I had. Okay. But if I know what values are going to go into an array, I can use it. Just like up here when I declared all of our names because I know exactly who's here in our class. Okay. All right. Questions on declaring, creating, and populating arrays. With that last one, did it skip over the name array when you did the cities one? So it didn't skip over it. It, it would have done it, uh, but we didn't have anything on the page to reflect that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it did run this code and it did make that message variable. Cool. Yeah. All right, array length. Okay, we already talked about this a little bit, um, but if I say new array of eight data, the, the length will be eight. Notice I, I could just print this out and say data.length and it'll just be a number, just like we saw in our debugger. And then sizes.length will be five. Not to get mixed up with the indices, okay? Our indices for sizes will be zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, our greatest index will always be one less than the length. Okay. All right, accessing data in an array. Notice this is just a screenshot from a debugger in Google Chrome, in Google Chrome. So right here, I declare an array of our data, a new array of six values. And then I added negative 4.3 at index of zero. Um, at index of one, I could put something else in. Right here, I'm getting the value from a user's input. Uh, I could output something to a div, to our output div. I said data at index of four. I can treat all of these as individual variables. They're all individual pieces of data, even though they're stored right next to each other in memory and they're all in an array but I can treat them all as individual pieces of data if I want to. If data at index of five is greater than 6.3, okay? So again, I can use these all as, as regular variables. Here in the debugger, it's really nice because I can just hover over, in this case, the variable named data and see everything in it, every index, every element, every value, and the length of the array, okay? Questions on this? Notice the two ways that we could declare data. Okay, one was saying var data equals new array of six and populating each value individually. We could do this in a loop. If we had the values, let's say we had a prompt or something, or we had six inputs, we could do this through a loop. Um, or if I have the data already, I can just say var data equals that and do what we just did in seven lines, do it in one, okay. All right, loops and arrays. We already looked at or two loops now, okay. Uh, so var user string. Um, so this is kind of cool. Uh, JavaScript has, as you know, a bunch of functions that we can use with arrays. All right. Uh, one of them is dot split. Okay. Um, this is actually technically used with a string. If we come over here, uh, we have name one equals Samuel. If I said uh, name one dot, uh, let's see where split is right here. Okay, so split is a function that works with strings. And if I said uh, at A, what it's gonna do is it's going to turn this string into an array. And it'll put the values on each side of this A in different elements in the array. Okay, let's say I had, um, let's change this real quick to a string. So names now is a string. It's not an array. There's no curly or there's no square brackets. This is just a string. Well, I could say names split at index of comma. Okay, and it'll separate every single one of these values by the comma. And so this would be at index of two in our new array. Let's look at it. Let's see what happens. 
I'm going to comment that out because I think that'll give us an error now. Oh, it might not actually. Um, and I'm going to put a breakpoint on the first line of my function, hit refresh, and press the button. Okay, so check out names. We have a nice string. Notice it's not an array anymore. And I say names.split every time there's a comma. Oh, I forgot to assign it to something. So it did that, but I didn't give a value for where I wanted to store it. So basically, this dot split will return an array. And I did nothing with that return value. So I'm going to say var names array equals that. Now, whatever this returns will get assigned to names array. Let's check it out. I'm going to press my button. OK, we have names, our string, and the names array after every comma. It, put a new value into our array, okay? So that's a really quick way of making an array. You have several questions in your book about, you know, like sorting stuff in a text box or um, reordering things or alphabetizing names in a text box. And you would do that with split because you get a text value from a text box and you'd turn that into an array to be able to work with the data more easily. Just so I'm yeah. Um, so I'm understanding that clearly. So the comma, when it's there, it ignores that value, but takes the stuff on either side. Yes. So that the comma will not appear in the array. So if you did A, my name would just be S U L. And that, that would be the two points. And it yeah. wouldn't have the A. So so let's look at this. If we split our names string uh, by the value of A, let's watch what happens. And hit F5. And hit refresh, hit my button. Okay, our names array is still exactly the same, but instead of, instead of splitting it at the comma, we're gonna split it at A. And here's what we get. Notice there's not a single A in here, just like there wasn't a single comma last time. It'll just take the value before the first A, put it in its own spot, and then everything until the next A into its own spot and so forth. Okay. That's really cool, thank you. Yeah, great question. All right, filling an array. So uh, we declare lists with a size of 80. So we got 80 empty spots. And we say, we call the function fill. Okay, we learned about function over, the, over these last couple of weeks. And fill takes two parameters. It has a list or an array. In this case, we're just calling it list. We could call it Fred, we could call it anything. And X is seven. We'll loop through the entire thing. For every index of our array, we'll put in X, which is seven. So at the end of this, we'd have an array of 80 values, all of which have the number seven in it. Questions about this one? Okay. Um, let's keep going. Summing the values of an array. Okay, so uh, this function would work with any array that's being passed into it. Okay, we just have a function. We can pass in an array and we say var sum equals zero while i is less than list.length, the list that's being passed in right here, we'll just add list at index of i onto our sum. And I could very quickly and very easily sum up the values of an array. Okay, I wonder if I have any of these, if we can see them running. Chapter 10, I don't think I do. Okay, questions on this one, you guys? All right, finding a specific value in an array. So if key is in the list or the array, then returns the first index where the key is located within the list. Otherwise, we'll return negative one. So this is what we call a linear search. Okay, we're just gonna search from top to bottom or bottom to top, however you wanna think about it. We have an array being passed in here, and then we have a key. And we loop through, we say i equals zero. Well, i is less than list.length, so it'll go through every single value in the array. And if list at index of i is equal to our key, then we'll return that index. So we know what index it is in our array. If we go through the whole thing and list at index of i was never equal to the key, then at the end of it, we'll return negative one. Okay, let's look at this. Um, let's, let's just write this up real quick. Um, let's make a new function called find value array. And for our parameters here, we need the array. 
we could say array, but that is a keyword in JavaScript. So we actually can't, we could say list. Um, I could say user array if I didn't like list. Um, and then I could say key here for whatever I want to search for or uh, user search value. Okay, so we have our list and our key. And then in here I'll say um, for i equals zero, i is less than user array dot length plus plus. And then we'll just have a simple if statement that says if user array at index of i, whatever we're at currently, is equal to user search value. Then we'll return i. Otherwise, at the end of it, after our loop, we'll say return negative one. Okay, so up here, let's go ahead and call that function. Let's say find value in array, and we're gonna pass in names, and we're gonna pass in Rian. Okay, so I'm saying right here that I have an array and I wanna search for Brienne to see if that's in here. And uh, I'll just put this all into an alert box and we'll have a nice little pop-up, whether it's negative one or some index that it finds. Okay, let's run this, let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna put a breakpoint here so we can see where we're at when we call the function. And I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. Okay, I'm gonna hit this. Come into here, it recognizes this find value in array as a function. Names, we have our nice string. That's no good. Okay, let's see what happens. So I just passed in a string. I did not pass in an array. Okay, that was my bad. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit F10, we jump down into here. We have our false user array and we have our user search value. Uh, user array dot length is 56. It is not seven, though it should be seven. It's 56 because if we're talking about a string length, so every single character from here to here, apparently it adds up to 56, okay? So we're gonna loop through this a lot, 56 times. And every single time we'll say, Brienne, oh, but look at this, user array at index of i, oh, it does find it, okay? So we're able to use bracket notation on a string, um, but in this case, we have a zero for i, and it'll just say, what's our string at index of zero? And it'll just grab this first value. Okay, and it'll loop through every single character, which means it will never be equal to our search value, which is several several characters. Okay, so let's fix that. Um, negative one, because none of the characters in our string are equal to Brienne. So instead, I'm gonna take out this. Actually, let's just split it by a comma. And then we're gonna search for Brienne. Now the interesting thing with this, the way it'll split it, it'll still have our space right here, okay? So I could say I wanna search for space Brienne if I wanted to. Um, the best way to deal with this in a professional environment would be to take the space out of the array. Now I could loop through the array, okay? And I could say uh, names right at length, and I could say, um, if uh, names array at index of i dot, what would it be? Who starts with? That sounds nice. Let's try it. Uh, dot starts with, um, and we'll say a space. Okay. So if that is true, then we'll want to take one off of that, which I'd have to Google how to do it. So let's just Google JavaScript. Uh, take first character off string. Delete first character of a string in JavaScript. Yes. Okay, substring. Okay, so we could look at what substring does. What this does though, again, it's an index in our string. Right here it's saying, take off everything before index of one, which is just index of zero. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna say if our value in our string starts with a space. Then we're gonna say, let's reassign it. Names array at index of i equals substring of one. So it'll take off that space. I'm no, I have no idea if this will work. Let's give it a shot. And then after all this, we're gonna search for Brienne in our, in our array. So let's run this with a nice breakpoint. 
F5. No errors in the console, that's a good sign. Okay, we have a nice name string, split it by a comma, and we have all of this, which is pretty good, except we don't want these spaces here. Okay, now our first loop, we're gonna try to clean up our array. Okay, let's come down in here. Names array at index of zero. Let's see what it is, is Samuel. Okay, does that start with the space? False. Okay, that looks like it's working pretty well. All right, I plus plus, I is now one. That is still less than names array dot length, which is seven. Okay, now let's look at what names array has at index of one. Space Shara. Let's see if this returns a true. And it does. Okay, so we come down in here and now we'll say names array at index of I, I is one, is Shara. We'll say substring of one and we can look at what that'll return and it'll take off that first, that first character. Okay, so now I can look at names array and look at that, Shara looks as good as Samuel. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna take off this breakpoint. It looks like my loop's working. I'm gonna hit F8 and I'm gonna look at my names array. And you can see we cleaned it up nicely. Okay, now let's see if we can find Brienne inside of our names array. Oh, I, I'm still doing the string, you see that? This is the name string, we need to pass in the names array. So let's come back over here and grab names array. And we'll pass that into our function. Okay, F5, have a breakpoint where we want it. Okay, and now we have our array here. That's what we want and we'll search for Brienne. Okay, I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here into my next function and I can take this off. Uh, maybe I'd put one down here later on in the function if I wanted to. Uh, I can see my user array in, inside of my new function and the user search value. Ooh, we left that space there. Let's take that out. Okay, it shouldn't find it. It should return negative one because we do not have this string inside of this array. Okay, so let's take that out and it says negative one. Take off that space and we'll hit F5. Hit our button. User array looks good. User search value looks good. User array out like the seven, F10. Come down in here, I is currently zero. User array index of zero is Samuel. Is it equal to Brienne? No, so we just skip it. Next one, user array at index of one is equal to Shara, which is not equal to Brienne. I'm just gonna keep on going. And finally, our user array at index of, I don't even know what it was, five? What is I? I is four, okay? Um, that is equal to Brienne, to our user search value. In which case we'll return that and we alerted four instead of negative one. Okay, now there's all sorts of stuff that you can do with this. You could have a user input that searches for something. I could have an array with a thousand values and be like, hey, does this social security number exist in this array? Or like, this is something that is, is very, very, very common um, that you have to do, looping through, array, looping through arrays, looking for data in arrays. All right, any questions on that code that we just wrote you guys? Okay, some cool stuff, I love arrays. All right, parallel arrays. Oh, you guys, these are awful, okay? Um, and I say these are, I'll show you guys a better way, but let's talk about it. So uh, imagine a table, we have two columns of data or two columns that every piece of data will have. Okay, we have a student ID and a student name. If I wanted to store this in parallel arrays, uh, I could have a student IDs array that has all my IDs and then a student names array. Now, the deal with parallel arrays is that each piece of data is connected to uh, a piece of data in another array. We do it by our indi by, by the indices. So uh, Felix is an index of zero in both arrays. His name is an index of zero and his student ID is at index of zero. Jonathan is at index of one. His student ID is at index of one in the other array. So you can see they're parallel arrays. Now, if I wanted to, I could have like 10 arrays. Maybe every student has a phone number and an address and an emergency contact. I have an emergency contact array, and I know that I could find Jonathan's emergency contact information at index of one, okay? So they're all parallel arrays. Now, here's why I don't like this. One, I don't like having all this data stored in different places. Yes, it kind of makes sense because, you know, I, I have these nice clean arrays. I have an IDs array, I have a names array, I have an address array, um, but there's a better way, right? Do I have it in my slides here? Oh, I do, okay, good. So here's the better way. 
Uh, var student, okay? Notice the curly bracket right here. This is called an object. This is in your book, uh, but we're not gonna cover them too much in this class. But a better way to organize things is instead of saying that, you know, Jonathan is gonna be at index of one across 20 different arrays, um, I could just say that Jonathan is at index of one inside of this array and he has an object instead of just a single value. So notice right here, I declare student as an object. Student ID is an attribute in this object with a value and student name is an attribute in this object with a value. Student one, same thing, student two, same thing. And then I make a student's array with these objects. Well, if I look at this in a debugger, okay, we have students, which is an array of objects. And so index of zero in my array has student ID and student name. Index of one also has a student ID and student name, but it's for Jonathan instead of Felix. And then index of two is the stuff for Grace. Okay, so these objects can be huge. Uh, for example, um, let's just look at an object that we use every week. Document dot. This is an object with all this stuff in it. If I was gonna look, if I was gonna run this again, I'm just gonna push the button and hover over document. It looks just like my screenshot and my slide. This is a massive object with all this stuff in it. It has a URL key and a, and a URL value. And it has an alien color and an empty string. It's got all this stuff in it. Okay. And we've only used a handful of these things. You know, we use like document dot get out of ID. I think that's actually how we've used. Some of you have used document dot write, even though I discourage it. Um, but there's all this stuff in here. Okay. And this is this is an object that's built in JavaScript. Okay. Well, we can make our own objects just by using curly braces. You have a key that looks like a variable name. Notice it's not in quotes or anything. It looks just like student. We have student ID, colon, and then a value, and then comma. And then another variable name inside of this object, and then a value, and then it ends, okay? And so more than parallel arrays, yes, they work. Uh, I have never once used a parallel array in a professional environment, okay? But it's important to understand that it's possible. And that is one way that you could organize your data if you chose to do so. All right, array methods. Okay, we talked about a couple of these and I showed you guys where you could find them. All right, if I Google uh, JavaScript array methods or functions, uh, W3Schools comes up and here's that, page, here's that page that we were just on a little bit ago. And you can see every single one of them working. Uh, pop is huge, okay? I use pop and push like all the time. Almost every time I work with JavaScript arrays, I'm using pop and push. Okay, pop method remove, removes the last element from an array. Okay, so I did have banana, orange, apple, mango declared right here. Okay, and then I say fruits.pop and then we print it again and you can see mango was removed. Okay, now let's try something else. If I say fruits.push and we'll say pineapple. And let's print this up again. And let's copy this line of code. And we'll have a demo three. Okay, now watch what happens when I use push. Okay, so pop takes the last thing off of an array. Push, I can add something to it. So earlier when I was like, usually I just declare an array like this. I'll have our names equals and I'll have an empty array. Okay, well then I might go through, let's say I had a text area, okay? And I told the user to put in a list of names and maybe their list of names looked like name one, name two, name three. Okay. Well, I could use our dot split that we did, split it by the comma and space, separate all these names. And then I could say names dot or names dot push. And I, and I could put anything in here. Okay. But these, there are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of these functions that go along. Um, and usually you can go and read this and that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but maybe instead of doing that, uh, just think about cool things that you can do with arrays and then Google it. Be like, how could I like reverse a string in an array? Or how could I do something else with an array? You know, most of these I learned how to use because I was trying to fix a problem. And I'm like, how on earth do I take the first character off of a string? Oh, there's a substring function. Okay, you know, and so, but it's good to know that this is here and you can just Google it. Uh, but there are a bunch. Let's look at a couple of them real quick. 
Concat returns a new array composed of the original array and the argument arrays or values. So if I had several, of, several arrays, I could say my first array name dot concat and pass in a variable or pass in an array or several arrays and it'll just throw them all together in a new array. Uh, array dot every returns true if a test function returns true for every element in an array. Uh, a dot filter returns a new array that contains all elements that passed a test function. For each calls the function once for each element in the array. Index of returns the index with the array of the first occurrence of the element to find. Uh, dot join join element or joins all elements of an array into a string. So that's kind of like the opposite of split. We had string dot split. Well, if I wanted to turn an entire array into a string, I could say array dot join. And then I can say, I can also pass in optionally uh, where I want to join these, just like we did with, with split and the comma. Uh, array dot last index of, we pass in what value we want to find. Start is optional, saying at what index in the array we would start searching. And it returns the index within the array of the last occurrence of the element to find, or negative one if it's not found. Uh, array dot map returns a new array that contains the results of calling a function on every element in the array. Some of these functions are fantastic. We have filter, map, reduce, um, but they're kind of intense. We're not, we're not gonna look at them at all in this class, um, but they will be very, very beneficial to you if you ever end up doing anything with JavaScript. Uh, pop and push we looked at, reduce, returns an accumulated value produced by calling a function on every element in the array. Uh, reverse, reverses the elements in an array. Slice returns a new array that is a copy of it of elements between start and end. Uh, Array.sum returns true if a test function returns true for at least one element in the array. Sort, sorts the elements of, of an array in place. You can also pass a function into that to compare to say how you want to sort it. To string returns a string representation of the array. So it would just be a string that looks exactly like the array. Splice removes and adds elements to an array. Okay, you can pass in what values and what indices you want to change. And then unshift adds one or more elements to the beginning of an array. Pretty cool stuff. All right, common mistakes, forgetting that the first index is always zero. Okay, this says in a JavaScript array, um, the only language that I've ever seen that has an index of one for the first value in an array is R. Every other language that I've ever dealt with has zero based arrays. Okay, Java, C Sharp, C++, Python, they're, they're all zero. Uh, going beyond the end of an array. This is a really common mistake. Uh, if I right here, I said I equals zero and I is less than or equal to array.length, that will always go out of bounds because the length is always greater than the last index in the array. So that'll always take you out, out of bounds. And if you do that, you'll just have a nice bright red error in your console. Uh, confusing an index with the value stored at an array. Okay, so right here, um, if I say i is less than array.length, um, sum plus equals i, the only thing that this will do is add up all of my indices. So in this case, I'd be adding 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which would be like 15. Okay, it does not sum the values of the array, it would add the indices of the array, which isn't what I want. Instead, I would have to say, I gotta stop moving my mouse. At the bottom here, sum plus equals array at index of. You have to use that bracket notation. So, okay. Any, any questions about arrays, you guys? Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, we ended four minutes early, but I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, and like I did here, I would just encourage you to, to try, try messing around with arrays. You know, um, at the end of your, at the end of the chapter, there's a lot of really cool programs. And next week, I'll try to write a bunch of those with you guys. Um, it, it'll be a fun week also as we prepare for the exam. Um, but, but yeah, it's a great way to practice and, and learn about arrays and how they work. So. So just so I'm understanding correctly, we have this week, which is week 11 or 12. We're in week 12. Jeez. So we have 12. 13 and then 14 is a half week. Is that is, that's what it looks like? Or is it 14 is. a full week, but it's the exam? Yeah, I think it's just the exam and then any other little like self-assessment type stuff. But there's no there's no assignments for that week. 
It's just the yeah. Wow, my calendar is like Wigan. Yeah, but Carolyn's right. Orange. Okay, um, they're the only thing in week fourteen. We're not going to have a lecture. We're not going to meet. It's just your gym. And I okay. always open that up in week thirteen for you guys because okay, okay. I never enjoyed doing stuff in week fourteen as a student. So, yeah. <laughs> so I figure you guys probably don't either. Um, so that'll be open probably on like Wednesday of of week thirteen. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a great week, you guys. And let me know if I can help you with anything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Thank yep. you, Brother Birch. Yeah.